はいそれではお待たせしましたえっ、ー、とでは次の公演に移りたいと思いますえっ、ー、と次のご公演はえっ、ー、とファーストオプティマルトランスポートオン GPGPU というタイトルで、えー、京都大学のカトリー先生にお願いしたいと思いますよろしくお願いいたします OK thank you very much for,、uh, for coming here for to listen to my talk thank you very much to Professor Aoki for inviting me My name is Marco Couturi, I'm from Kyoto University, and so I will tell you a little bit about my recent research. I'm sorry, there is no proper PDF viewer, so the slides will have to be presented in this way. Let me just see if I can at least.、Uh, yes, I would use this then. So,、uh, first, what I would like to say is what is exactly、uh, optimal transport? So, optimal transport, since it's in the title of my talk, I would like to define it. Uh, it's a tool to compare probability measures supported on metric spaces. So, this definition sounds really abstract, but my,、well, my point here is I, I want to say that we are going to deal with probability densities or probability measures. And if you think about it, a lot of machine learning is about probability measures or probability densities. So, for instance, we, were, we heard about text processing in the previous talk. If you think about bag of words, typically this is a histogram. So, it's a probability measure. If you think about a statistical model, then it's a family P theta. If you think about a sample, that's, it's, called a, it's what's called an empirical measure. So, a lot of what we do in machine learning is manipulate probabilities. And here, the message of my talk is that there is a nice tool to deal with probability measures, and it's called、uh, optimal transport. And so, why is it of interest now? Well, it is of interest now. Let me just. Yes. So, why is it of interest now? Well, because in theory, there's been a lot of work in recent years about optimal transport. And、uh, I guess the most important thing is the Fields Medal of Cedric Villani in 2010. And some of you might have heard about optimal transport under, the, under a different name. And then it's usually known as Earth Movers Distances. And this is a popular tool in, in computer vision. And so, my, my, the message of this talk is simply that, okay, this sounds like a really fairly abstract tool. But I hope I will convince you that with some very recent、uh, computational developments, and, the, and in particular, the fact that we compute, can compute this, this,、uh, this optimal transport using GPGPUs, well, a lot of things are changing and a lot of new ideas are appearing. So, the three topics I would try to discuss today, because I would be a bit short on time, are basically the definition and the computation of optimal transport. The second part would be about my recent contribution, which shows that you can go from a Simplex type method, linear programming, iterative, something that's not very nice for GP GPUs, to a、uh, GPU friendly uh, quadratic uh, implementation. And I will illustrate this with new methods and applications. So let me just start with definitions and computations. So, how can we compare two probability measures? So, if you think about any basic statistics course, and if you have read、uh, Professor Amari's book, We all know that we can do this using call, something called information geometry. And so we can design different distances for probability measures by basically comparing the weight of each probability measure, mu and nu, at all possible locations x. And so this is, for instance, the, the framework for Kullback Kleiber divergences, Patachariya distances, et cetera, et cetera. So whenever you read a book, even when you study maximum likelihood estimation, What you're actually doing is playing with Kullback Leibler divergences between data and your uh, uh, family of probability measures. So, what is optimal transport? Optimal transport is a bit different because it will need another ingredient which we, didn't use, we do not use when we define Kullback Leibler divergences, and which is the proximity, or sorry, the distance between observations. So, if you think about this, this is just an integration, a flat, and I just integrate over all possible x's. But I don't really care about whether the mass at some x here is not too far from a mass at some point y. And this is what optimal transport is going to do. So it will rely on the fact that we have a metric between observations. So if you think about the bag of words model, for instance, in text, well, a lot of approaches just consider that those histograms are just flat histograms. Now, what I'm telling you is I can use a distance between words. And then I want to reflect that distance between words. When I'm going to compute the distance between histograms of words. 
So the first thing is this metric, and the second is something called uh, the set of joint probabilities with marginal of mu and u. So let me just give you an example of what this is. Imagine I have two probability distributions on the real line. So this density mu and this density nu. I'm sorry, it's a bit small, <laughs> but I hope you can see. Well, what I'm going to manipulate with this optimal transport theory is the set of joint distributions that satisfy these marginals. So here, it's easy to see that if you integrate all the mass in this direction, then you will get this mountain here. And if you push all the mass in this direction, you will get this mountain here. So this is just to say that mathematically, this is a joint density that has the marginals mu and nu. Now, there's not only one. There's many, actually. You can, you can define a lot of them. And usually, it's an infinite number of them. What optimal transport says is that it wants to find the optimal joint probability, which minimizes the cost or the distance between x and y and expectation. So this is a fairly abstract definition. So let me just show you what it, it is when you particularize it to empirical measure, so some points. So suppose that I have two clouds of points with weights. So the first one is Ri delta xi. So those are the red points. So I have both locations on my space and weights. So this is a weighted cloud of points. How can you compute the optimal transport distance between these two cloud of points? Well, I'm going to make it even more simple so that I'm sure you will understand immediately what this is. Imagine that I have now two measures which have the same number of atoms, and each weight is one-fourth. Okay, so I have four observations, four observations. How can I compute the distance between those two sets of observations? I'm sure you already heard about this kind of problem. I have two sets of points. I want to compute the distance between the set of points. So one possible way is to find a way to match one point in the red measure to one point in the blue measure. And if we do this, we might as well try to do it intelligently so that we minimize some notion of cost. And so if you do this intelligently enough, you find the optimal assignment. And this is a problem that's 60 years old now. So optimal transport distance is just simply a generalization of optimal assignment metric for clouds of points. This, this is probably sounds familiar for people that are interested in registration, for instance, for clouds of points. However, if I add a new point here, then I cannot compare my four points and my five points. So I need something that generalizes well. And this is exactly the idea of optimal transport. Instead of trying to look one a one-to-one -one mapping, I will try to look for something that distributes mass. So I would like to give you some precise idea of what it boils down to, but I'm, I'm a bit short on time, so I will just very, go very quickly. Imagine I have my two measures here. What I'm going to, I told you that I need two things to, to the compute optimal transport. I need a distance a metric between the points, and this is going to be contained in this matrix. And then I need a set of joint probabilities, and this is going to be a set of matrices. So what is the set of matrices that I'm talking about? It's a set of matrices that have row marginals and uh, row and column marginals that are set to the, to the weights of my two clouds of points, R and C. And then I'm just illustrating this. So let me just go through this. So what I just want to say, tell you is in the end, the optimal transport problem is a linear program. So I have a cost matrix here. I have a set of feasible matrices. And the solution is basically the minimum of the dot product with this cost within this set. So this is just a linear program. And as we all know, a linear program is, finds an optimal solution in one of the vertices of the feasible set. So this is OK. This is a nice story. The problem is that this is extremely computationally intensive. It's, as I was telling you, since this is a generalization of optimal assignment, necessarily the, 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 the complexity is at least cubic. And in most cases, uh, you will have an empirical complexity of n cube and something more. So what I want to say is we have a nice tool to compare clouds of points, weighted clouds of points, but it's computationally expensive. And this is one of the reasons why it hasn't been used so much in machine learning. So here comes the, 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 the GPU part of this talk. So what I want to do is make this faster, and not only make it faster from a mathematical viewpoint, but also faster from a hardware point of view. And I will be able to do both by, by presenting the, using a technique that I'm going to present. So here is the, the idea. The idea is we know that getting here to this vertex is usually extremely costly. Is there any way we could meet halfway, not so close to the vertex, but something that is already optimal enough, and get there very, very cheaply? 
And the solution is to use something called the regularization. So let me just explain to you. Every transportation or joint probability here has an entropy because the matrix that has row sums and column sums, which are histograms, sums overall to one, this has an entropy. And so what I can do is introduce, sorry, let me just go a bit fast, introduce an optimal transport problem. So this is the linear program. I'm mi minimizing over P dot product with a matrix M in some convex polyhedron. Uh, sorry, in some, in some polyhedron. And I'm going to add a regularization term, which is going to be this entropy. So the idea is to say, if I ask for none, I mean, I do not need entropy, then typically I will go here. And if I ask for a lot of entropy, I will go to something called the independence table, which is already known. And so by adding this little term here, I'm sliding between these two extremes. And here, as I told you, this is what I'm actually usually interested in. And so we have this path here. And why am I introducing this? So it sounds like introducing this regularization will make the problem a bit more complicated. After all, here we had a nice, very well understood linear program, and I'm introducing something that is a bit different. Well, the, th the reason is it's known that the solution to this problem has a very nice peculiar form, which is that if I take this cost matrix, I take exponential minus this cost matrix element-wise, then I know the solution must be necessarily of the form a diagonal matrix times this matrix times the diagonal matrix. And I'm not going to say why, but it's something that's been well known for a long time now. And so if I know that this is the solution that I'm looking for, there is one theorem called Synchronous Theorem, which tells me that there is always a way to actually get a diagonal matrix and a diagonal matrix here, such that the matrix P lambda will satisfy the row and column marginal constraints. And the way to get there is using something called the Synchron fixed point iteration. So let me just give you a bit the overview. I have added this term here. Mathematically, if I just write one or two lines of math, Lagrange method of multipliers, I can tell you that the solution of this is necessarily factorized in this form. Then I know an algorithm that gives me this u and v. And the algorithm actually has quadratic time. And so I'm there, basically. When, I, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm able to compute those two solutions, those two vectors u and v, I get my solution, which lies somewhere in this green blob, and I'm happy with that. And so here is the algorithm. So remember that the original linear programming algorithm is a network flow solver, so it's a simplex. It's something that is really hard to parallelize on GPGPU. Here is now my algorithm. The algorithm is you give me a matrix M, which is the cost matrix, and you give me two histograms, R and C. Then I'm going to set this matrix, and I'm going to choose random vectors here, and then what I'm just doing is repeating many, many times this loop. And this loop, if you look at it, is just element-wise division and then matrix product. And then when I do this a, number, a sufficient number of times, I have convergence. And so this is what people call the synchronous algorithm. And let me just basically tell you what is exactly going on when you run the, 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 the synchronous algorithm. What I was writing here, the, these iterations here, basically those two iterations, you can do it in one go in matrix computations, and it's simply multiply a matrix times a vector, divide all the entries of a vector by that vector, then multiply again with a matrix, and then again division. And all of this is trivial to do on GPGPUs, right? I mean, this is exactly what, what GPGPUs are good for. And it's not only that. Here I'm just telling you how I can compute the distance between two histograms, between two probability measures. But there's actually a very nice trick, which is that we can vectorize this. So instead of having a synchron fixed point iteration which updates one vector after the other, I just have to have something that updates sets of vectors sequentially. So what I just want to tell you is that this goes hundreds of thousands times faster in some cases. In many cases, it goes thousands of times faster. And so all of the optimal transport that I was telling you about, this, this fancy method, this fancy theory, 
can now be used in practice. So let me just give you a, a simple example. Let me just, so I'm showing you here 30 images, okay? So I have sample randomly images, and each image is basically three ellipsoids which are varying in size, orientation, and sometimes they're one, the three of them are one inside the other, sometimes not really, sometimes they overlap. If I ask you to compute the average image in this, of these 30 images, so what, is there anyone that has an idea of what the average image would look like, what, what it could look like? So I'm aware that I'm not posing the question in very clear terms, right? Because average doesn't really mean anything. If you just average the intensities of the images, well, this is what you get, right? But on the other hand, if you ask a child what is the average shape here, then he would probably tell something like this, right? And this is what our method, optimal transport, outputs without giving any knowledge on the problem, without parameterizing anything. And so recently, we have been using it a lot in graphics. So this is a recent paper that we published in Seagraph this year, last month. So suppose I give you three shapes here, three, three, 3D shapes. How can, average, how can I average between them? And so that's what we try to do using this, this, these approaches. And a few more things that I haven't had the time to, to detail here. So as you can see, we had a duck, a torus, and a cow. And in the middle, we have some, some shapes that appear which are interesting. At least they're funny for my daughter. She finds them funny. And so here, the same thing. We have four shapes, four 3D shapes. And you want to ask, what is the interpolation that I can make out of those three, four shapes? And again, a lot of the maths that I didn't tell you about help you do this very quickly and very efficiently. And they all rely on this smoothing trick that I just told you about. Another example, imagine that you have those four faces in the corners and you ask again, what is the average or the interpolations between those faces? And then if you just use a computer and just average in a naive way, of course you get something weird like this. If you use it with Wasserstein distances or optimal transport, this is what you get. We also had applications in, in brain imaging recently, and we, proposed, we presented this in July in the, in, in the conference. And so the idea is, suppose that you have many patients that are given some stimulus, and you rec record some brain activity for each of those patients. And now you want to kind of average those brain activity patterns, because you would like to have an idea of what, look, what, what an average patient, what the average patient's activity would look like when you show him or her something. Of course, if you just do simple averaging of those activity patterns, then you get a lot of blurs, blo blobs a bit all around. And this, this doesn't really look like one person, right? This looks like the average of all the activity patterns, but it doesn't look like one average pattern. And so using optimal transport, again, we can do this. Again, for instance, imagine that you have these measurements, you have those truncated Gaussians, you want to compute their average, but not by just taking the sum of all those hills and mountains and dividing them by 12 here, but by using optimal transport. So et cetera, et cetera. So I, I will stop maybe at the, this latest example. Now we are working on other things than just computing averages. We're working on, for instance, doing Wasserstein PCA, so optimal transport PCA. So this is the kind of PCA that we get by using those ideas of optimal transport and uh, many other ideas which are currently under investigation. Thank you very much, and I'm sorry for, for one minute extra. Thank you.